Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, today we are having uh, one in a series of short interviews with doctors who recently attended the uh, 2023 American Society of Nephrology Annual Meeting in Philadelphia. And I'm Kathy Olewski. I'm actually a vasculitis patient living with MPA vasculitis, and I do medical webinars for the Vasculitis Foundation. But today is just a short interview, and I'd like to start by introducing Dr. Sunil Udani. He's a nephrologist in Hinsdale, Illinois, who is affiliated with multiple hospitals in the area, including the University of Chicago Medical Center and Advocate Good Samaritan Hospital. He received his medical degree from McGaw Medical Center in Northwestern University. Welcome, Dr. Udani. Thanks so much for spending your time with us today. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks for inviting me. If you have any disclosure, that is something the VF asks us to have you say. Absolutely. Um, so I am involved in clinical trials um, and, uh, and receive funding support from um, a few of the companies that even were, uh, that I mentioned, um, Novartis, um, Amgen, um, there's a company called Trevier, uh, a, company called, a company called Kalidita. So those are all uh, companies that um, uh, I've consulted for as well as um, uh, received funding support for our clinical research. Uh, and I would, you recently attended the American Society of Nephrology annual meeting in Philadelphia. And for those of you that don't know, this is a three-day convention where nephrologists from all around the world come together. And what we'd like to know, Dr. Udani, what were some of the main takeaways or highlights from the meeting? Did you learn about any new research or clinical studies that are relevant to patients with vasculitis or kidney involvement? Yeah, I think that uh, the few things I'd, I'd mentioned about, um, as you said, it is the you know, our largest uh, international meeting and happens once yearly. And you know, having attended these over the last 10 years or, or more, um, the interesting trend or the notable trend, I think particularly important to the, the vasculitis community is the shift in focus in terms of, you know, one, therapeutics earlier in uh, kidney disease manifestations, including in vasculitis, as well as the focus on, on rare disease. Uh, if you looked at the, even the highlights from both the uh, late breaking clinical trials, which is sort of the, um, one of the highlights of the meeting overall of uh, new studies that are you know, literally published that day, as well as even the uh, the range of sponsors that were there um, uh, helping support the, the meeting, uh, the focus was really on you know, rare diseases. Um, and we are uh, you know, thrilled by that to see that there is an investment both from the research community, from the uh, from pharmaceutical industry, uh, it's really everyone to kind of focus on uh, rare disease and, you know, as opposed to, you know, looking at kidney disease as something that uh, we manage with dialysis, looking at earlier manifestations um, and how to target that. Um, you know, with regard to vasculitis specifically, uh, there was a few things that I think come to mind. Um, so I think one is, you know, the, the meeting is a uh, blend of looking at, um, uh, research or investigation on currently available treatments, as well as looking at the potentially new new treatments. Um, and uh, the in terms of the vas in terms of vasculitis, at least in MPA and GPA, uh, which affects the kidney mostly, the uh, the biggest therapeutic change has been the um, advent of uh, avacapan or, or, or tavnios as a brand name, and that's a uh, it's a we call a complement inhibitor, um, and the, you know the this agent got FDA approval a few years ago, uh, but naturally its use was limited. You know initially to the clinical trial, and so now we have you know much more experience outside of that. Um, so I saw you know, quite a few um, presentations from a variety of populations, national, international, older individuals, younger individuals that um, highlighted the both the safety as well as the effectiveness of adding this on to conventional treatment. And, and for those of you that are not familiar, the goal of this treatment is to control vasculitis um, in the in the context of uh, those two conditions, GPA and MPA, but particularly to control it without the use of, uh, of steroids. Uh, because we know that while you know, treatments can be effective in the, both those conditions, uh, one of the complications we've seen, unfortunately, over the many years is the uh, uh, the steroid side effects, which can be 
you know, in some ways almost as bad as some of the manifestations of the disease and particularly from a kidney standpoint can cause quite a bit of trouble. Um, so having this as an additional option um, uh, was, uh, you know, is, is, a, is a great addition to our sort of treatment uh, uh, regimen and then seeing more data you know, conveying that it can be effective outside of clinical trials and in larger populations was, uh, was reassuring. The other um, area is in you know, new treatments. And you know, in, again, in renal vasculitis, um, which predominantly is GP and MPA, the rates of remission with the conventional treatments, cyclophosphamide and rituximab, have been fairly good. Um, however, there are individuals that still break through, and we know that there is, um, uh, you know, cyclophosphamide, while effective, has its own um, ill effects. And so there is always room for uh, more targeted therapy, more effective therapy. And uh, what we've seen is that similar to the way that we have treated, um, you use rituximab to treat, treat uh, a specific target of B cell population or white blood cell population that is responsible for um, producing antibodies and vasculitis, there are other diff other targets that you can use. Um, either an agent that can be more effective at targeting those cells or other cells and other parts of the immune system that are involved. And so while that was smaller studies right now and, and um, uh, not uh, the, the, the large kind of data that we would need to uh, adopt at widespread clinical practice, it was promising to see that, again, there is investment in the area, there's work in the area to, you know, to do better. Wow, well, that sounds like there's some very exciting um, clinical trials and research in both of those areas. And um, we look forward to big changes and improvements in the future. Yeah, no, I think that there's a growing, you know, I think the growing understanding is that, um, yes, you can treat the disease, um, but if your complications of treatment are, you know, create a new issue, then, you know, we, how much, success that we had, uh, given that people like yourself live with these conditions for a long, you know, long time. Um, and so we have to be cognizant of that. And so the more targeted we can be, and I mentioned um, you know, the, the drug of Acapan and it's, it's it targeting part of the immune system called complement. And that was a, also a big theme of the, of the meeting is looking at agents that target complement, still not strictly for vasculitis and, still have some ways to go before we can see that. But again, recognizing that targeted treatments for immune mediated illnesses that are also quite rare um, is you know very important for us to see that there's investment in that and also uh, effective agents being developed. You know, Dr. Udani, I was just wondering how has uh, COVID impacted research? Was there anything about that at the ASN? Certainly was. I mean, this this year, a little bit less than before, but certainly um, more and more of that coming out. You know, I think there was two things that I, I would say I took away from it. You know, one is that um, many of the clinical trials that were done during this time period, that were, I should say, were presented were during the time period of COVID. So it, it highlighted that, you know, despite a global pandemic, that the efforts of, you know, individuals that participate in studies, you know, uh, clinical researchers um, can persist on. And I think that sort of speaks powerfully to the community overall. Um, the second thing is, you know, I think we're still unpacking <clears throat> the impact that COVID has both short and long term. Um, so there was, you know, whole sections of posters um, related to, you know, complications associated with COVID in terms of, um, you know, exacerbating underlying illness, uh, de people developing new illnesses. Um, but I would say that still, I think the, a lot of the sort of acute COVID um, uh, issues were presented probably in earlier meetings, um, uh, but now we're looking at kind of more of the long-term and I think that will take more time for us to, to you know, fully unpack. Well, I'd like to say thank you for sharing these uh, points with us for all the patients that are looking forward to new things in uh, helping us with our vasculitic diseases.